After reviewing the properties of light, we are now ready to address two questions. One, what influences the value of lambda max? And why do molecules even absorb light? Why does it do it? Well, let's start answering those questions. So we, we need to remember that according to, according to the law of conservation of energy, energy cannot be created nor destroyed, right? So when a molecule absorbs a photon, it also absorbs that energy as well. And so when you look, have a molecule and you zap it with UV or visible light, it's going to cause an electron transition. And we can see this in the MO. Here's our butadiene here. And this is the MO before we zap it with light. Okay. But what happens when we zap the butadiene with a photon of light represented with that arrow there, we get a promotion here. We promote that electron to a higher energy molecular orbital. And so now in this state here, this would be the excited state. And it has absorbed some energy. It absorbed a photon of light. But this is a excited state. And so the molecule is not going to stay like this forever. So when the molecule relaxes back down, what happens is this electron relaxes back down. But then where does the energy go? It cannot be destroyed. It can't just all of a sudden disappear. What happens when that high energy electron relaxes back down, a photon of light is released. And if it's in the visible region, then our eyes can see it. And we can see that color that's associated with that photon of light. Now, in order to get this electron right here to be promoted, okay, you have to zap it with a photon of light that has the same energy as the energy gap right here. That's the only way you can get that electron to be promoted. So if you wanted to promote, say, this electron to right here, you would have to zap it with a photon of light that the energy equals that gap right there. And that can be done. But in our case here, that photon of light equals this energy gap. And that's why we get that e electron promoted to that higher molecular orbital. That all comes back to the idea that energy is quantized. There's only a certain amount of energies that can get an electron to jump into a higher uh, energy state. So that's why molecules absorb photons. It's because you're exciting electrons to a higher energy level. Now let's take a look at lambda max and see what's going on here. So molecules that contain only sigma bonds will not absorb UV light, okay? Or visible light for that matter. They're lambda max, so if we look at just a regular alkane, okay? They do absorb light, but not visible light and UV light. The light that, that is absorbed by just an alkane or molecules with just sigma bonds, the lambda max is just very, very, very short. Very short. Okay. <clears throat> so if UV vis and... The UV vis range is from 200 nanometers to 800 nanometers. So that's the UV vis region. 
So an alkane is going to absorb uh, light 200 nanometers and below. Very small or short wavelengths. Okay. But molecules that contain at least one pi bond have a lambda max. And we quantify this and say it's, we've noticed that it's above 160 nanometers. So if you look at hexene, right there, 177, ethene, you can see everything that has only one pi bond there has a lambda max uh, above 160. But notice something. Notice that when you start introducing more than one double bond. Look at from ethene to a diene. You see how it goes from 161 to 217? Lambda max is getting larger. And then if you go for a third one, you see how it's now 274. It just gets larger and larger and larger. And so what we're observing as the amount of conjugation so if we keep going, more double bonds that are conjugated, the <clears throat> lambda max gets larger. Okay. So, but that's key to remember that the amount of double bonds, if they are conjugated, is going to increase the lambda max. Okay. <clears throat> because Take a look at that. Let's compare this real quick. Okay. So one double bond, two double bonds, and this molecule here, the double bonds are not conjugated. Do you see how you went from 177 to 178? Doesn't change very much, does it? But if you go from there to there, do you see how the double bonds are conjugated and we get a much larger, much larger uh, lambda max. And then when we get to a third one that's conjugated, it keeps going up. Okay? So that's really important to remember. Adding just double bonds all over the place may or may not increase lambda max. But if they're conjugated, they will. So let's take a look at these three molecules here, and I'm going to write above them their lambda max for reference here. 161 nanometers, 217 nanometers, and 274, okay? Now we said as conjugation increases, lambda max increases. I, I want us to understand at a deeper level the relationships between wavelength, frequency, and energy. Okay. Now, when we look at this, why? Why does the lambda max increase as the amount of conjugation increases? Okay, that's one question that I want to answer. And the answer to that question is quite simple. Okay. Let's, I erased it here, so let's write it again 161. Okay. The simple answer the reason why you have a higher lambda max is because. Look at the homolumo gap. As you increase the amount of conjugation, do you see how the homolumo gap gets smaller and smaller and smaller? Okay, so that's the reason why. Let's dig a little bit deeper though. Okay, <clears throat> what's going on here? Well, we have to remember this relationship. We have to remember that energy is going to be proportional to the frequency, okay? And we can have another relationship saying that it is going to be inversely proportional to the wavelength. So you could actually say energy is proportional, in, inversely proportional 
to the wavelength. You could also say write it that way. So you have that relationship and that relationship. So what it boils down to is as energy of the photon increases, we know the frequency of that photon of light is going to increase, which means that the wavelength is going to decrease. If we can remember that, then we're going to be able to understand what I'm going to talk about next. <clears throat> okay. So the homo luma gap is getting smaller as conjugation increases. Now, what does that do? Well, if we want to promote this electron to the lumo, it's going to require an energized photon. So if we zap it with a photon of light, let's call that photon one. And we contrast it to zapping the dying with a photon of light. We'll call that photon two and compare the photon that we zap the trying with photon three. Okay. Now, when we look at the alkene right here, we see that that gap right there is rather large in comparison to the other two molecules. So that means in order to promote that electron to the pi star or the LUMO, you have to zap it with a high energy photon. But when you look at this gap right here, it's a shorter, it's a smaller gap, less energy. So photon two is going to be a photon of light that is lower in energy than photon one. And then as you continue to the last, the trying, you can see that energy gap right there is even smaller. So the energy of this photon three is going to be less than photon two and photon one. It requires less energy to promote the electrons to the LUMO. So if photon three is a lower energy photon, lower energy photon, what does that mean when you compare the wavelength of photon three to the wavelength of photon one? We've got to remember the relationship here, okay? So the wavelength of photon three is going to be larger because a larger wavelength is a lower energy photon. And so that's what you're seeing here is that lambda max right there is larger as a larger wavelength because it requires a lower energy photon of light to absorb. Isn't that cool? I think that's just so neat. All right. So that's the rationale behind why some molecules have different lambda maxes. It all has to do with that homo lumo gap and the energy of the photon that's required to get the electron promoted to the higher energy molecular orbital. So we have carrots here, okay? We see that they're orange, okay? There's a molecule in carrots called beta carotene, okay? And it's a molecule with conjugated double bonds throughout it, okay? So when the molecules in the carrots absorb a particular photon, that wavelength is going to be removed from the white light. So white light shining on the carrot and that carrot is going to absorb a photon of light. And what happens in this particular case is that the carrots are going to absorb blue light. Right? So if blue light is absorbed, then that means that re everything else remains. Okay? And what our eyes register, this is so cool. The carrot absorbs blue light, but what we see 
is the complementary color, which is directly across from the wheel. So it goes to right there. And our eyes see orange. Isn't that cool? And so ultimately what we're going to be doing now is we're going to, like I said in pre the previous videos, we're going to use UV Viz spectroscopy to help us figure out what wavelength of light molecules are absorbing. And we can use Beer's law to relate the amount of light to the concentration of the sample. And that is really important in the sciences to know the concentration of your, your solutions. And that's one way we can do it. And we will practice that in class.